back to the HCS Pro League fall season, and we are getting ready to start our final match of the night. One to surely be a crowd pleaser, and that is going to be Evil Geniuses taking on Enigma 6. Yeah, this one's going to be intense. Huge implications on this one to possibly start the domino effect, the roster mania, the hurricane, the shuffle, whatever you want to call it. Yeah, I mean, talking to Snakebite there, that actually got me really excited for this weekend because of how much is actually riding on this. And, you know, I haven't had a chance to talk to Seller that much, and so I don't know where his mindset is at right now on what he wants to do. But, I mean, these kids all want to make it to finals, and only four teams get to go. So that's a big decision maker when you are deciding what team you want to end up on at the end of this period, and you only get one transfer. Yeah, curious to see how EG is also going to bounce back from their loss going up against NB yesterday. They came out hot. They were looking really good in the first game, and then uh, slowly started to drop that series. Take a look at their lineup: Roy, Lunchbox, Ninja, and Victory X. Another uh, reincarnation of twins and besties over here. And yeah, I mean, these guys, they looked amazing against Optic Gaming. They didn't look as good against NB. Let's see how they're gonna match up against E6. All right, and of course, we talked about, uh, you know, Victory X being one of the older players in the league here. The most experienced team is going to be this squad here. The amount of tournament wins Lunchbox and Roy has is a little bit ridiculous. And then of course, Ninja and Victory X have been competing for a very long time. I know, and I think I said it on one of the other shows, I got my start 2005 with Victory X online before ever going to an actual event we were just matchmaking buddies you know playing all the time one of the players to watch out for though on e6 we did the interview yesterday with him is boo boo doo the guy's been grinding an insane amount always has been and he's playing at a really high level he's definitely the type of players that with his play style he could definitely throw someone like eg off because eg always plays that numbers game and boo boo doo plays the numbers game very well as well so looking out for that yeah, I mean, a lot of it's going to come down to which Lunchbox and Roy show up as well because, you know, they were dominant against Optic Gaming. And, I, you know, I think we missed it on stream, but somebody told me that Roy had an overkill uh, against oh, really? Optic Gaming in that, in that nice last, camera work, Kyle. Fi <laughs> last final flag capture there. So Optic Gaming, uh, you know, showing some weakness. Evil Genius is showing a lot of strength. And this is one of those situations where Evil Genius, as I know, does not want to come down to the situation they found themselves in during summer season. And they're going to do anything they can to try to make sure they take home this victory. Yeah, I'm really curious to see what the map picks are and the game types that we're going to be playing in this series because that's going to say a lot. Here they are, Fathom CTF, Plaza Slayer, then Plaza Stronghold, CTF Coliseum, and then Eden Slayer. So we're not going to see any Empire. We're not going to see any Stasis, so no Stasis at all today. And then Fathom CTF. Ooh, I don't know who this one's going to go to. I don't know if we've seen E6 necessarily play this one yet, but we know that EG, they're definitely ruthless when it comes to getting in there and running that objective. Yeah, I mean, I remember watching Evil Geniuses last season on this map, and I was really impressed with how well they were able to choose when they wanted to push the flag. So they'd always get the flag pulls, they'd always move it, you know, halfway across the map, but they were always so effective at, you know, just reanalyzing the situation they found themselves in and deciding whether or not they're gonna continue pushing it or stop and slay. Yeah, and we're starting this one off. Who do we wanna take a look at? Let's start with a little bit of Lunchbox point of view and see what he's gonna do off the beginning of the game. I believe his strategy is to go for the railgun. Let's see if they're gonna change their strategy at all, if they're gonna keep that same one. And, Again, a lot of it does come down to Roy Lunch, like you were talking about, which version is going to show up. If Roy shows up like he normally is, one of the best players in the game. So it looks like Lunchbox is going to opt for that light rifle push. Railgun's still available, though, so he's going to just go straight for that one. Two kills going to the side of EG. They're also going to pick up the Railgun. Really good opportunity from the push. They're already running the flag out and getting slays at the same time. Three slays now going over to the side of EG. There are three up, though. Let's see where the push is going to come in from E6. Also, let's see if anyone's able to secure this capture, but Lunchbox ends up having to run this one. He's taking out a no Shields has that railgun. Nice shot, staying alive right as here. well. Thank you for the tweet. Get the hype going, and there's the first cap coming out from EG right from the get-go. Hot start. Oh, and good nade as well. Trying to take that player weak. That's going to be Stellar running away here. He's still got Roy top center. He's got Suspector one shot. This is ex teammate Suspector as well. Good frag nade. Will pick up the kill there. Unfortunately, Suspector with a great splinter nade ends up dropping him. Now Stellar, the big controversial teammate right now. It all depends on his shoulders <laughs> what he wants to end up doing after tonight is over and this is going to be a big decision maker as how this game unfolds yeah i mean he's been uh, a part of a couple team controversies now that, that 
famous picture, obviously, of, uh, of him in, inside of the Optic House. But uh, yeah, I mean, he's definitely someone that can turn it on. But Lunchbox over here still with this Railgun needs to be careful, though, because he's no shield. So wants to work his way back up on top of the map through that red treehouse. So smart play by him staying alive. That's the Spectre one shot. Takes him down with that light rifle. Probably going to keep his shields before he decides to push up top center. There's Booby Booby in front of him. Flag being pulled as well. That's two kills going over to EG's side. Another player is going to be in that garage door. He gets spotted out as well. That's going to be Stellar getting a kill onto Victory X. But Lunchbox needs to drop down and help secure this capture. Another player's probably already made his way over towards that elbow area. He gets taken out. That's going to be another cap going over to EG. That's a fast 2-0 start. And Lunchbox is being so aggressive, so effective. Picking up a couple extra kills, helping secure that one to go in. And we talked about it before this game. like. I was always really impressed with Evil Geniuses on this map once they kind of like midway through the season when it felt like they really figured out how to play it. Now Roy, ooh, losing that one up close battle to Stellar here. Stellar just being extremely talented like we talked about it before, but with the Lunchbox grabbing yet another railgun here, these kids and Towie especially are all over the timers. Yeah, Lunchbox trying to bring that over towards that red treehouse to where his teammates were. So I do like that he, even though he wasn't able to get top center as fast as he would have liked, at least brought it towards a position where his team could potentially get that one. However, that flag is being pulled pretty quickly here for E6. And also, Victory X falling off the map. That's going to give a huge numbers advantage to E6. They should be able to put this one in. There's only one player alive here. That flag is going to go in. It's going to be two to one. So, Victory X probably missing that jump to go towards top center is going to cost him another flag being pulled. Right, yeah, that one's moving really quickly. Roy's top center trying to contest that the best he can. Kratos is going to take him out. So that's not going to be good here for Enigma 6, although he gets dropped as well. So that flag is still out. Boobadoobu is now going to be the next one to start relaying this. He should drop, but he's passing oh. it to a teammate. Yeah, boobadoo has got his Nikes on, man. He was moving pretty quickly and tossed that one out. That should be the second cap going to E6. Man, this game's been back and forth. That's two caps in about two minutes there for both teams. So absolutely insane objective play coming out from both teams. This series is going to be crazy, Kyle. And wow, a quick double kill from Suspector at a perfect nade shot. No, he cannot see the player outlines. He just predicted Ninja was going to be jumping up there when he threw that nade. You can see the last three players from Evil Geniuses as Roy drops here as well. They're trying to push out. Key control is the treehouse here, but quickly, Suspector is pushing over to try to help Boobadoo. -Boo. Suspector in really prime position. Has a player on his radar behind him. That wasn't Victory X uh, using his radar to his advantage, but actually does pick up a kill on the Stellar. So, Suspector just going to continue to hold this area while the rest of his team actually is going to drop down there. So, could have stayed top center and laid down more shots. He's going to end up dying. So, curious to see why he elected to drop down there. Maybe he didn't think someone was going to run the flag. Taking a look at the kills. Ninja with a slow start. Kratos coming out here with 11 kills. So, that's definitely been the most impressive start we've seen from Kratos so far in this season. All right, Lunchbox gets into a 1v1 with Stellar, but Stellar doesn't lose it. Does secure his shots there and pick up that kill. Now he is weak. Roy trying to contest the Spectre. But keep in mind, ex teammates here as well. So there's a lot of history between everyone on these two squads. We do have the new camo getting ready to spawn here. So look for both players to try to get top center. Suspector did not know Roy was hiding in the attic there. Roy, nice job being sneaky. Didn't get the hit marker with that grenade, so didn't give up his position. So that should be a pretty good job getting top center here. He's going to drop, though, because he did get weaked by that grenade. So not sure what happened with the camo, but it was in play here. So Roy is just going to slow play this one, possibly looking for that camo guy. And it looks like he is going to spot someone out with the railgun. That's going to be Kratos. So that gun is going to fall off the map. So no more railgun. However, no more EG as two players are going to drop down. And E6 is going to slowly push in. And let's say I'm bored with this. Uh, stellar here for a little bit. The see stellar? Exactly. S the Stellar. The Suspector Stellar is stellar. what I was going for for a second here. But uh, this is, like we said, the controversial pick. Are they going to win this series? If they do win this series, will he still lead the team? I am really excited to find out. Well, two kills going to go over to EG, but Stellar staying alive. No shields. Getting the kill onto Lunchbox. That's going to do a nice job trying to reset the map there. Meanwhile, Ninja trying to make his way into the base does get taken out. Kratos with that uh, six start so far has been, you know, pretty solid the last couple days. You know, there was tons of controversy after the interview, but he's been doing a nice job of putting it behind him and focusing on the games and the rest of his team following suit here. But you're right, Kyle. It's going to be interesting to see if they're able to walk away with this series, if they're going to actually stick together. All right. Now, a lot of players dying here. A lot of aggression coming from Enigma 6, but clutch plays by victory to take these players out. That's going to give EG an opportunity to regain control of top center. We're looking at about another 30 to 45 seconds for this next camo to come out. And Roy, oh, Victor X leaves Roy just a moment too early where Suspector's hiding around the wall and actually grabs another kill here. 
Victory X does realize that there's a player on his radar below him. That's going to be Lunchbox taking out Suspector. Railgun did just drop, but Victory X doesn't want to drop unless he has to. And probably would rather have a teammate pick that one up. So that one is going to be picked up by Roy. They need to get back to top center, though, because Camo's going to drop any soon. If they can get Camo Railgun, that'll be big for each of Looks like I did hear a railgun go off, so we'll take a look to see who actually was able Roy to has pick that, that one up. Roy here. So yeah, Roy does have that railgun, and interestingly enough, he elected to go back towards his own base instead of making his way towards top center. So trying to take a little bit of a safe route here, but Boo Dubu is going to charge in. He doesn't care that he has the railgun. That's a big miss shot coming out from Roy. Maybe not a misplay, but he did put his, himself in the position where he had to hit the shot and he didn't do so. Meanwhile, Boo Boo Dubu with the unconventional flag run over towards his own treehouse through the red silo. He's getting this one pretty far. He's still got a decent amount of shields as well. His flag still is at home. Looks like this one's going to go in. All because Roy did not hit that railgun on the player in the elbow, which was Boo Boo Dubu. And let's take a look at some of these stats here. Uh, you know, obviously Enigma 6 did come out and slay harder than Evil Geniuses did, but gosh, they had a 2-0 lead in two minutes of that game. And Enigma 6 was able to turn it on and actually bring it back to that series. They saw a couple extra minutes go by, but eventually just, yes, was that Boo Boo Doo Boo with a yeah. little bit of an outplay with some really hyper-aggression. That's on Roy. I mean, that play was huge. Roy brought the railgun back to his base, which wasn't uh, necessarily bad play, but it wasn't the best play in the world. But in that type of situation, that's the railgun that he's going to hit. You know, not even nine times out of 10. He's going to hit that 95 times out of 100. And it was a nice utilization of the thrust there. And Boo Boo Doo with also that unconventional flag run ended up making it so he choked the spawns and they didn't have a chance to push in through that elbow area. And I think that's the first time that we've actually seen that flag ran that way so successfully. I mean, and keep in mind that when Booba Doobo was running that, he was through his treehouse before he finally had his shield start to recharge. So he ran that extremely quickly. Evil Geniuses did not have enough time to react and grab any kind of real footing in that game after that first early uh, amazing start from them, really. Yeah, well, now we're moving into Plaza Slayer, which is a good game type for both teams. But I think that this is a good start for EG. I mean, not a good start to the series, but a good start for them to reset here. Mm -hmm. I think that they've been one of the teams to really help develop the meta of this game type, going back to when they even had Snipe down, how they would collapse on the spawns and things like that. But they need to be careful. You have to always make sure that you have an anchor. Always got to watch out for Boo Boo Doo, who's a master of holding that Snipe side. Also does a really good job staying alive in the hotel area. And another thing that E6 does really well they also like to rotate the sniper rifle, and they have numerous setups on certain spots of the map, similar to how like Optic Gaming will hold the sniper over there towards that glass area, or maybe bring it over towards the cafe, and they know where to set up to watch each other's backs. So this is going to be a really competitive game moving into game two, but this is something that EG needs to win. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to go down 2-0 in the series. Of course, we know it's possible to come back. We already saw a reverse 3-0 sweep, and there is nothing worse than a reverse 3-0 sweep with a game 50, yeah, I mean, reverse sweep, I think, has only happened to me one time. Um, and I, I can't even remember that one time because I probably blocked it out. But <laughs> it's it's very rare, and it's been much more common in Halo 5 because it's really all situational when it comes to the game types. Some teams really excel in certain game types more than others. And, and it's one of those games where even though you beat one team one day, you may lose to them the very next day. So it's very interesting. It's all about necessarily who's playing better and just a lot of these games come down to just one small play like we saw happen with Roy and Booba Dooba over there towards that elbow area. Right now we do have Looks like Suspector just setting up, trying to contest his overshield. Great nades coming from top gold. You did have two players drop for Enigma 6 already. Good opening strategy from Evil Geniuses. Now, Evil Geniuses is a team on this map that we know no matter what the score is, they're able to kind of like slow things down and come back. They were down by a whole lot against, was it Optic Gaming? I, I think it was initially, where it was like 24 to 6 or some kind of ridiculous opening strat for them. And they almost brought it back to win, uh, falling just short. Well, everyone in E6 is caught over here in that cafe area, and they do get a couple of kills. They do get one kill, but a couple of kills going over to EG. 
and red team typically has the advantage here when it comes to getting that over shield but you want to see the blue team send more people over towards that sniper area and they weren't able to do so but that doesn't matter because they're only down by one kill at this point and have decent map positioning here and this is one of the things that worry me for eg is while they do collapse that puts you in a position where if your collapse is unsuccessful you get stuck over in the yard area and they like to go into the yard more than i would like to see them and now suspector is rewarded with the sniper because of it and now you can tell roy is hiding and just watching this angle the same way suspector is just camping here uh, cutting off yard cutting off flowers locking down cafe so you know now we got a tied up series roy popping out suspector missing that headshot that's going to be one you want to hit in that situation yeah. Lunchbox should get an eye on him, but not Ooh. quickly enough. <gasps> that would have been an insane double kill. Uh, these guys have to slow it down here on the side of EG. There's no reason to give up any of those deaths within these last, like, 30 seconds, or last 50 seconds, really, because you just wait for the overshield. The overshield's going to spawn top center here pretty shortly. You have decent position. You have snipe side. These guys aren't in the ideal setup with that sniper rifle, so just doing a little hover there with that ground pound to try to get his shields back with the Spectre. Now, the Spectre most likely going to rotate over there here towards the glass because that's a really prime position to snipe here. Could also drop down towards that driveway area too and still get a really good position, but it looks like he's going to elect to go into this glass area. Again, this is a really prime position. You have perfect angles on the people that are going to be making their way over towards that OV, but a nice move coming out from Victory X, jumping towards S4, then going onto the awning there. Also, nice team shot's going to be able to make sure that they're at least able to tap to burn that overshield, but the Slay's going over to E6 aside Kratos with five assists. And that was three dead as they try to push over to get that overshield. We were just tied up a moment ago, and Enigma 6 pulling way ahead with that play or that last overshield contest here. Now, Suspector is out of ammo, but doing a great job at just being a distraction as EG knows he's over on this side of the map, and they have to be really careful as they push out. Yeah, and something to keep in mind since Suspector is a, you know, former and recent teammate of this Evil G Genius's squad is you gotta assume that in a plaza game type like this, a plaza slayer, that Tawi, Lunchbox, and Roy are gonna want to use what they've learned on Plaza Slayer and try to pass that down, you know, to their teammates while Suspector is probably giving them the intel on what EG likes to do, which could give potentially them an advantage in this series. So that's just something to keep in mind there. And while that's happening, it looks like finally EG is able to get some sort of control as Roy gets the sniper. Right now, Roy quickly pushing that away, running to a teammate, trying to get it set up, get some time to snipe, like give him some mobility to move around the map. He looks like he might take it over to where Suspector was initially sniping in yard. Now they know that these players are on loop and yard side of the map, but they don't have anyone from their team here as well at that sniper side. Yeah, this one gonna slow down. No reason to give up any deaths here. If you're E6, just do what I was talking about, what EG needs to do. Slow it down, wait for that overshield. Now, not a big fan of where Roy is sniping. I would rather see him rotate over towards that snipe area and maybe even try to get into that hotel. But, I mean, they should be able to get this overshield based on you know the weapons that they have in the positioning here. And here comes the charge in from the rest of these guys from E6. Everybody flying in towards the cafe. Roy does get one kill, looking for another kill. That is two, however, going over to EG with that overshield coming up here pretty shortly. Everyone on E6 that's gonna spawn is gonna have to make their way over towards top center. Ninja gets caught out over there towards the loop. Roy switched over to his pistol, getting that kill onto Kratos. Spots more players over there in that cafe. Definitely hears those shots coming in. Gets that body shot onto the Spectre. His old teammate, Victory X, is gonna clean that one up as well. Now the BR going over to Roy's hands and he's going to get uh, aggressive over here in the cafe area. Now he's got to be careful too. He sells a lot of ammo in the sniper rifle, but this is a good flank. They don't see him initially. Now, I believe that was Overshield going over into the hands of Kratos, but I like this rotation here. He gets some callouts from Victory X, who actually wins his 1v1 against the Spectre. That's going to be a lead change here now for Evil Geniuses as they go up 20 to 19. Yeah, Kratos with still full Overshield here. He's, Kratos is actually making his way over towards the blue area, and it looks like everyone on EG is on top of that and is already rotating around here towards that weak area of the map, which is the posters area. So heads up play coming out from EG, realizing that E6 used that overshield to push in towards blue. Roy taking sick angles, getting that headshot onto Boo Boo Doo Boo. He's gonna rotate over towards the glass. So this is EG finally starting to come together here and put something together in Plaza Slayer. 23 to 20 still, and they have yard locked down. They have loop area locked down. Doesn't look like anyone from Enigma 6 is over at snipe area either. They're all in flowers and cafe here. At least three players. One is weak. Roy's trying to hit a few no scopes. He's got Victory X to help him out. They need to make sure they work together well. Here, Roy with a clutch double kill. 
Yeah, looking for the triple, jumping back into yard. There's also another player down below him in that driveway area. Other spawners for E6 actually come back up into the loop. Curious to see where the other two players did. Maybe came over towards top blue or maybe towards the lift. So let's see where the player outlines are. It looks like they did get stuck in that cafe. And here comes the collapse on the yard. Roy just being a nuisance over here, still on this killing spree, still has three shots in that snipe. Everybody looking for him on the side Sniper of E6. I, I like what we're seeing out of him. He's still being really aggressive with this weapon, doing a lot of damage with his BR, not just a sniper, although he is still hitting a lot of these head shots. Uh, 29 to 22. It was uh, essentially Enigma 6's lead just a short moment ago. He's only got one shot left in the sniper. Absolutely count on him to leave this weapon out or go for a no-scope here shortly. Now uh, he is kind of getting trapped. Bottom snipe lift. Trying to stay alive for as long as possible. Wait for some teams. Victory X grabs a kill. Oh, that's a good body shot, wow. but Spectre. So Spectre challenged that one, and then Lunchbox ends up cleaning the kill up eventually, but that's not bad considering the spree that Roy went on to only be down six kills here for the side of E6. Take a look at what Kratos is doing. He's trying to put up a fight for that overshield. He's going to be fighting Ninja. Nice help coming in from Boo Boo Doo Boo. Were they able to get that overshield, though, on the side of EG? I'm not sure. Lunchbox running away like he stole something. He did, so he got the overshield, making his way over here towards top uh, gold. Only a five-kill lead, though. They're going to have to pull away a little bit more here. Yeah, I'd like to see make, making sure uh, Jason or Lunchbox goes over and helps Cam or Victory X contest. Now, Victor X did go a little bit too aggressive. Probably should have waited a few more seconds. There's mm. no point in doing that. Wow. That was a little bit too aggressive from this that EG squad. That was a three-kill swing. I mean, that was really big. Now, everyone on E6 is back into this game, and they have good map positioning as well, so they should be able to take the lead here unless E6 does a nice, or unless EG does a nice job of collapsing on E6 when they come into this yard area. So we'll see what happens with Stellar with that nice flank. The Spectre picking up a kill as well. Here comes the charge now. Everyone's going to just collapse on this yard area. They have to immediately rotate towards those spawns as well. All right, now let's go on board with Kratos. As Enigma 6, we have yet another lead change. They will go up 35 to 33. Still got a lot of time here before this next overshield sets up. I'd like to see Evil Geniuses make sure they don't give away any free deaths here. So we only got four minutes left to play. Yeah, not giving up free deaths. That's what's on Kratos' mind. So he immediately backed up and actually goes back up top gold as there was a player on his radar behind him. Is he going to spot him out? He does, but that player is going to rotate back in there towards the cafe and just still cut out on that sniper. And Kratos again staying alive over there towards top gold, but Ninja hasn't dropped yet and he's going to be able to make his way over there towards the snipe side. Stellar with the sniper gets that pick onto Roy. They also spot Ninja over there towards that snipe ramp. So let's see if Stellar is able to get any big kills here with that. Oh, he did want to go for it, but there's a lot of damage coming out here from Evil Geniuses. This new overshield is getting ready to pop any moment. Stellar with the sick no scope, airborne no scope there onto Lunchbox. That's a five kill lead here coming down to the wire of this game. It's going to be Roy getting caught out as well. Stellar just locking down the side of the map for his team, and EG can't get control. Yeah, I mean, this is not looking good for EG. <laughs> They need to do something quickly because this one's going to get out of control. It's an eight kill, make that a nine kill lead here. What happened in this game? All of a sudden, E6 really turned it on. They're on the verge of going up two to zero in this series. And you know, we talked about it before this game. I mean, this is the Evil Geniuses squad that defeated Optic Gaming. Now we've got Enigma 6 just putting on a tear. This Enigma 6 squad that essentially already broke up as a team, but now like thinking about getting back together. It's funny how things work out. It is. Maybe they had a little bit of a, a talk, a little bit of a meeting there, pow -wow. regrouped, a little powwow. It's just like, all right, you know, here, hold the pillow. It's your turn to talk. All right, now it's my <laughs> turn. Pass it around. And yeah, everybody just playing really well here from Boo Boo Doo Boo to Kratos to Spectre Stock. We've seen great things from every single one of their screens. And we're not near necessarily seeing bad decisions coming out from the side of EG. We saw Roy with that nice spree with the sniper rifle. We didn't get a chance to watch many other screens coming out from EG because we've been on E6 for a majority of this considering that they're winning, but curious to see what the stats were. Maybe someone dropped the ball there. 2 and 15 for Ninja. A lot of assists, but Look at victory. Ouch. Ouch. Victory's 18 and 9. 18 and 9 for victory and Ninja. That's very, very uncharacteristic from him. 3 kills and 15 deaths gonna have to maybe talk to him and find out what happened and that's gonna be game now we were just looking at stats but let's look at it again ninja luckily <laughs> picks up another kill right at the end of that one but needless to say two kills three kills that yeah, is a that's rough not game very ninja like uh, i'm curious to see what happened i want to i want to talk to him and 
um, find out if something, you know, was going wrong. Maybe there was something wrong with his communication. Well, I can we tell you right now, something was going wrong, Tom. <laughs> something had to happen. I mean, that's, again, that's very uncharacteristic for one of the best players in Halo 5. And Ninja's been doing work for a really long time. You know, a lot of people watch his stream. We never see him drop these 3 and 15 bombs. He's usually someone that's going to go like 15 and 3, maybe. Uh, not vice versa. So, again, I was wondering what was going on from EG's point of view because we were watching everyone's screen and it looked good. But, uh, again, I would like to go back and rewatch that one from, from Tyler Blevins' point of view and see what was going on. Typically, you know, from teaming with him, we know, well, I know that some of his weak points would be challenging a little bit too much and he is susceptible to getting flustered if things aren't going his way that could have been uh, a possibility for that type of outcome or maybe it just was one of those games i mean every once in a while he has had some uh, bigger negative bombs especially in the slayer game types but that's going to be you know kind of up there with it's one hard, of his much worse it's bombs. hard to brush it off when you're playing the same map again too and it's still in your head typically you want to reset by going into something else that isn't the same exact terrain, isn't the same exact layout. So is he gonna be able to brush it out? I'm not sure, let's see what he does in the beginning. Yeah, definitely wanting to see his point of view here to see if he's able to change anything up or find some more success this time around. He's trying to help Roy grab this camo, but just like that, right off the beginning, he just gets dropped. School in Halo Championship Series. A slow evening just got a little bit better. That's what I like to hear, man. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for your tweet. Everyone else, be sure to hit us up on Twitter. Let us know. This is possibly the last game of the night if EG is not able to walk away with a victory. All right now, Roy's got this camo, trying to use it effectively. That's going to be points going on the board here now for Evil Geniuses. Roy definitely wants to play the sneaky. Oh, I like what we're seeing out of him here. He gets a little bit of damage on Seller. I like the position that he's taking, backing down, trying to stay alive as long as possible, oh, but no, too many of Enigma little, 6. He, he got worried there. He could have played a little bit more patient. I thought he was going to give Doobie Doobie a taste of his own medicine there down in the bottom mid hill in Strongholds, but that's just not the case. However, Ninja going over there, making his way, and that's going to be a quick little triple cap coming out for EG. So nice job by Ninja rotating over there towards the nest. Now let's see if EG is able to get anything going. It's been a while. All right, looks like Boo Boo Doobo got the spawn behind him, but gets spotted out by Roy. Really good job here. Great grenade, does a lot of damage. Second one and a perfect shot, picks up that kill. And look, you got Lunchbox in the hill. Let's go on board with him. He's trying to contest Yard. He's got players weak. That's a double. The Enigma 6 not able to grab any kind of footing. EG is really turning it on now. Yeah, as long as Lunchbox can make this jump, man. Come on, you can do it. One, two, three. All right, there you go. So, yeah, EG, they got the triple cap going. Let's see how long they're going to be able to hold this one. Ninja over there dying to a barrel towards Stellar. And that's not going to be good for EG because now two players are going to die and one gets spotted. So here comes the flood from E6. Whoa! <laughs> nice nade coming from Lunchbox. That was all planned. That was calculated, as Lunchbox <laughs> likes to call it. But this is the opportunity here for E6. They already captured the nest. They get out of bottom middle, though, because he knows that he can't do this one alone. Nice job trading kills now, so it's going to be cool. on two and two. At least they got the nest area. I should be able to open up the rest of this area for them. And looks like that is going to be Kratos now here with the shotgun. So let's see how much ammo he has left in this weapon as they're going to get their first opportunity to point, put points on the board right as Evil Geniuses hits about that uh, halfway mark. Yeah, I mean, it's been two minutes and EG already has 48, almost 50 points. So that's just a result of the triple cap just racking up points so quickly. But that doesn't mean that it's one's over quite yet. You can see E6 picked up a couple of kills there and Lunchbox hits that jump this first time. So that's going to be good. <laughs> Has this green gun, so let's see if he's able to put any work in. Does nice job, Ninja coming in with the cleanup as well. But here comes the flank coming in. If Lunchbox can get the skill, that'd be huge. He does six shots coming in. Suspector gets taken down, old teammate there. So, it's, oh man, that was nice job by E6 though, aware of where he was going to go after that. So good communication. Now Stellar is able to grab this camo. He's got a PR. He's got a light rifle, so he's got a lot of long range damage output here between these two guns. Perfect mm. splinter nade. That's exactly what you want to do in that situation. Always grab that splinter nade it is complete game change yeah and then flanks down here gets that double kill so pretty much a triple kill coming out from seller that's another kill right in front of him if you can get it that's victory x over there in the driveway staying alive he drops the boo boo doo boo i like that suspectors crouching around over here holding this area towards the posters we haven't seen a lot of people doing that as i say that he's gonna drop but uh there's no reason for him to necessarily even pop out in my opinion i don't know why kratos is challenging something from a uh, disadvantage of his uh, position but either way they're still able to pick up a couple kills and now everyone's trapped over here 
here in the yard for the side of EG, but something to keep in mind is that triple cap gave them still a decent amount of points, so they do hold the lead here, even though map control's been and the side of E6's favorite for the last two minutes. And look at that, another great splinter nade coming out of Suspector once again. He's pretty much got that thing on timer. Now he's still trying to contest. He's got lots of splinter nades, trying to cut off the angle of glass there. Ninja doesn't see him. Ninja just died in that spot a moment ago, and now gets back whacked in the very same light rifle location. Good shot, Spectre doing so much damage here to Evil Geniuses. Yeah, and E6 continuing to rack up points here with this camo coming up. It's pretty scary for the side of EG because this one's been pretty even so far considering how well these teams have been able to hold the setup. So now this is the move coming out from EG and typically we've seen them do this bottom middle strategy to do retakes. However, someone gets out of the hill. That was Lunchbox. They could have easily double capped that one. Vic Rex probably scratching his head on why Lunchbox decided to charge a player over there in that hotel and that's going to mean that E6 picks up a couple of slays. That's going to be three slays going over there and a lead. And wow, you had 48 unanswered seconds here from Evil Geniuses, followed by another 50 plus seconds, and we'll see how long it goes from Kratos. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at Stellar as he's got that camo right now. You know, we've been talking about him time and time again now. Great charge, catches Roy off guard and picks up the noob combo kill. Yeah, that's just a scary feeling when you're crouching over there towards the loop, and all of a sudden you see a giant booger flying towards you, and you have no idea where it came from. You're like, who flicked that one? But a nice job utilizing this camo from Stellar. He does get taken out by Roy eventually, so E6 finally gives up that bottom mid control to EG. Let's see if EG's able to hold it now. And this is Ninja here with a shotgun as well. Only used one shot so far. Gets caught off guard a little bit wow. and drops without picking up a kill. And one of the things that E6 is doing really well is even though they did give up bottom mid, they're not giving and forfeiting the nest and that's because Boo 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 always likes to hold that control over towards the dip area or get S4 himself and they're not concerned they're just waiting for the slays here they're waiting for EG to make a mistake and overextend and try to push over there towards the nest because EG yeah they want to hold this setup and then try to rack up as many points as they want but eventually they want control of the power positions which is that nest that's why you see Ninja making his way over towards there sloppy shots by both players but Ninja able to walk away with that one grabs the shotgun and gets rewarded for that as well and let's see if he's able to do some work over here, because if he's able to capture this nest, that's going to be a triple cap here for EG. Oh, great job here. That shotgun can be so impactful in this game type. Looking to put some additional shots down. Does grab a double. Last two players are charging him. He does. <gasps> what wow. just happened? Blank shotgun. No, that does take him down to no shield. Was that's it the a melee? huge play. So that could have been possibly a triple cap going over to Ninja and the EG side. And an that, overkill, if anything. Yeah, possible overkill going over there. But that's going to be a phantom shotgun. However, they do test this bottom middle so they do get the reset. So that's a nice job coming out from EG, Lunchbox, and Victory, and Roy while Ninja was dead. Now they rotate over there again towards that nest because they want to get it. All right, now good job by Roy starting to contest this hill. Nobody's shooting at him yet. Good job positioning him behind the pillar here, staying alive, keeping his shields as long as possible. That will nice. go over in a triple cap. And even with all that slang coming from Enigma 6, this is Evil Genius's game now. That's a nice play coming out from Roy. Like you said, he used the pillar to his advantage, and then as soon as the grenades came through, he ended up rotating and thrusting perfectly. Ooh, Boo Boo Doo Boo with the battle rifle. They also capture Yard at the same time, so if they're able to get these kills on the lunchbox, Kratos spots a couple players over there towards that hotel area, so that's not gonna be very good for them. That's a good spawn coming out for EG. Lunchbox picking up a double kill. Only one more push here for E6, but they have players dead, so it's not looking good. Oh, great job by Lunchbox. He's been doing amazing all series long on just backing down and staying alive, finding new positions and angles to take. Now he's working on collapsing at some players here in Yard. That was too dead for Enigma 6. They cannot be pushing out and dying now, and Stellar with the perfect shots. Yeah, that's going to be game. EG is going to be able to take this one. We finally got a series on our hand. It's going to be 2-1 to one in favor of E6. Taking a look at the stats. Stellar going big. Oh. They outslayed them, I think, based on those Stellar stats. Stellar outslayed them. Yeah, Stellar outslayed them. But no, all in all, I think those are pretty even slays there. It's just that triple cap in the beginning that EG got. That was able to rack up a lot of points for them. It could have been a lot closer if that wasn't the case. And they needed to stop the bleeding on E6's side just a little bit earlier. And then I think that was Stellar who got caught with the camouflage over there towards that light rifle area when Roy came in with the Spartan charge. And we're talking about how he was doing a good job utilizing that, but he needed to do it just a little bit better. And as you can see, he was over there, but ended up eventually dropping. So right when Roy came off the spawn, he stayed in the same spot for too long.
Oh, he missed it barely, shotgun. but it looked good. It looked good in real time. But yeah, here you see all the scores: CTF Fathom and Plaza Slayer going in the favor of E6. But now it is going to be Coliseum CTF going into Eden Slayer, and it's tough to say how this one will go. I mean, E6 definitely uh, CTF Coliseum, one of their game types. They're strong on it for sure. Keep in mind, those elbow runs are something to be aware of, but EG is going to be on top of it. There's no doubt that Ogre 2 as an analyst or Tawi as a coach are going to be aware of what E6's strategies are from the beginning strats up to what their tendencies are. Then going in, if it goes to Game 5, Eden Slayer, that's going to be a game that may even go to the time limit. I mean, and let's keep in mind, like we saw Enigma 6 face off against Luminosity on this game type yesterday, and like you said, you brought up really good points. This Enigma 6 is really strong at that game type, being able to secure captures without power weapons. And when they didn't have any kind of control, just grabbing the flag and taking it um, uh, rocket side and just running it as quickly as possible, just throwing the luminosity off off their feet. And that's something they're going to be able to replicate here against Evil Geniuses if they're not able to you know, really shut these guys down. And Stellar, 21 kills that game. That's kind of ridiculous as opposed to you know everyone else in the game. So he was obviously doing a lot of work, a lot of damage output. Is he going to be able to keep up that momentum yeah. here for this? This is all about the weapons, really, is what this game type is going to come down to. You need to secure the weapons and then utilize the weapons. And whoever's going to be able to do that is going to be able to walk away with a win here. If you, do, if you don't have, you know, the sniper rifle, try to get the rockets. If you don't have the rockets, try to get the sniper rifle. You know, use those weapons. You know, typically we don't see in the beginning where a team will get control of both. But what has to happen is once you have one of the weapons, you have to use that guy to go and kill the other guy pretty much. Typically you see so many times where the rocket guy, his job is to sniff out where that sniper guy is and to take him out and try to get those rockets actually in the base or to towards that snipe side of the map. That's the big goal here. All right, now that is going to be Coliseum CTF. Now, we have seen each one of these teams play this game type so far. Now, Evil Geniuses did end up losing this game type, but right now we've got Enigma 6 1-1 one and one on it. So still, doesn't really. I don't see benefiting yeah. any player here yet. It's, it's hard to tell with it being so early on you know, who's actually really strong and what the records are going to be for the game types. But based on like last season, for example, or based on the interviews from we've seen, this is both strong for both teams and it could be anyone's game. I'm surprised that EG, you know, put up such a good fight in that Plaza Strongholds game based on how E6 was playing. So that's a really good sign to see for them that Ninja's brushed off that Plaza Slayer game. His shot isn't looking as clean as we've typically seen it from him so if he is continuing to be able to warm up and get more comfortable in this series we're going to see it go to game five i'm again going to be watching out for what he's going to be doing here in coliseum ctf and also you know enigma six 2-0 lead in the series you know we see a repeat of what we saw earlier maybe another reverse sweep maybe another 50 49 game five only time will tell on that one now we did kick it off with ninja last time here um you know stellar with that performance we just saw from him i'm looking to just see he obviously kept that momentum up. It wasn't enough to propel his team to win that game number three and close out the series, but he should be able to step it up here. You know, he's an incredible sniper player and already hitting his first jump to start this one off. Tons of damage coming out and already melts Ninja. Ninja didn't even have a shot going up against the DMR when you have the sniper rifle. There is a double kill, so Seller's been a good point of view to start with. Looking for that triple kill onto Victory X. Victory X is going to escape out of there and he runs into a splinter grenade from his own teammate, but Boo Boo Doo in the meantime already running this flag. Whoever was the sniper there, Suspector needs to hit those shots or switch over to his pistol here. Meanwhile, Lunchbox with these rocks is going to push in, but that's not going to be quick enough. And they are going to get that flag cap 30 seconds into the game. E6 up 2 to 1 in the series and up 1 to 0 in right. CTF Coliseum. Stellar obviously had an amazing start to that game, helping Suspector get that flag capture. Now, no one else was really able to use the weapons effectively to set up or have any kind of double cap opportunities, but they did have rockets in the hands of Lunchbox. Wow, Stellar once again just making plays for his team. Yeah, now he's even fighting Lunchbox, staying alive over here, but Lunchbox with a nice splinter grenade onto the fountain. And meanwhile, Roy's crouching over here for no absolute reason, so curious to see why he thought someone was over there. And then, oh, there is someone over there crouching, <laughs> so his teammate actually spawns and then leaves that area, and how annoying. You spawn, you get meleeed by Kratos, and then he runs away, picks up another kill on a guy in the window, turns around and kills you himself. So Lunchbox is now the last guy alive in this cave area. Nice grenades coming out from Boo Boo Doo Boo. Got to expect everyone coming in from the elbow area now. Nice shots. 
That's three dead here. Last guy alive is Ninja. Got to keep your shields here slowly pushing. Everyone's going to slowly spawn. Where's the collapse coming in from E6? Needs to be a little bit sooner. There's Stellar with that nade shot. So nice job from him, but they need to push into the base here. Someone needs to get into that window area. Slow collapses here coming in, just slowly picking these guys apart. One by one, so many slays going to the favor of E6. Let's see if they're able to actually get this flag out. Ninja spawning under the base. That's going to throw these guys off big time. Here comes the flagpole. Is he going to be able to get this one? Boo Boo Doo Boo trying to do everything he can to pull this one, but Roy's able to get that kill onto him and so many kills, but not enough objective. Oh, and Spectre does get in that 1v1. Ooh. Get some help from Stellar, who just grabs yet another double kill. Flag still out. They They're going to get a touch. This. Lunchbox, the only person in the vicinity for a return. That player didn't get the melee onto him. Lunchbox what? gets a double kill. So whoever that was didn't even get any damage onto Lunchbox. Now Lunchbox is able to get the return, possibly being able to counter cap this one as well eventually. All right, now that's going to put the sniper over in the hands of Kratos. We've seen some good things out of him in the past. He does spot Ninja, who's trying to work on a flank, getting back into Enigma 6's base. Ooh. And wow, he had the rockets as well and drops him. Yeah, nice job from Kratos getting that imperative headshot on, this, on the rocket guy with the sniper rifle. Also going to spot Lunchbox, take him down to no shields. And when Kratos is shooting good again, he's very tough to play against because he wins these 1v1s, and then he's in position to just destroy your team because he has really good flanks as well. So that's just something that you got to be aware of. And he did enough damage there. It looked like a bad play by challenging, but all he was doing was buying his teammates enough time to put that flag in, and that's a really good play from him. So let's see if they're able to do anything with these rockets not able to at least waste it so a little bit of a misplay coming out from suspector but they are up to one in the series and two to zero in the game when victory has a player right above him booba dooba will take him out and then just trying to contest for the sniper rifle does a good job of staying alive lunchbox is pushing over to help as well he is able to stay alive for a little while here gets the new sniper gets rewarded for his teamwork takes at the top catwalk lunchbox has been on fire this series or is really stepping up in these last games I'm curious to see if he's going to be able to do some kind of damage with this weapon and sure enough not wasting any time already grabs one Ooh, and just give somebody a haircut yeah that looked like a number two maybe even a number one with how close that one was Kratos is going to drop him over down towards that grass area this flag's going to be getting pulled over there still and it looks like they are going to be getting this one pretty far i think that's going to be two to one now e6 still in the lead but eg's starting to make a comeback yeah, so that flag was going in with the help of Lunchbox picking up a couple kills there as well. He's still got tons of ammo in this gun. He's going to start looking for another position. Rocket was just grabbed. I'm not sure who has that one quite yet, but with the control now in favor of Evil Geniuses still, I wouldn't be surprised if that's actually in their hands. Now yeah. Lunchbox is trying to push up here, cover Victory X. They need to make sure they do a coordinated push like we saw from Enigma 6 here on that fly cap number two. Yeah, and one of the things to keep in mind, if you're E6, yeah, you're up two to zero in the game. You were up two to zero, now it's two to one. It's not gonna get any easier. These guys on EG are not gonna give up. They're super pumped. They wanna win this series just as bad as they is the guys on E6 do, so nice job with that. Ground pound onto Lunchbox from Stellar. Fantastic play. Of course, it's Stellar here. Just making plays left and right. We might just have to leave it on this kid's screen. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely, you know, the big question mark here on what's going to happen. If they win, are they going to stick together? If they lose, where is he going to go? As Snakebite was saying, he's been playing very well. He could potentially fit in on one of these teams like Allegiance or uh, another team like LOL that's in the Pro League looking for another fourth. So, um, not saying that, you know, for example, anyone on Allegiance is looking for a team change, but, you know, when, when an opportunity uh, like Stellar arises, you may want to actually take it just based on, you know, the way that he's been playing so far. So, um, personally, I would like to see E6 stick together, even if they do lose this one. There's no reason for them not to be able to work it out, but uh, you never know. All right, now you've got Roy working around on the pyramid. Doesn't look like Boo Boo Doo Boo saw him quite yet. Great job picking up that kill. That's two, three members down here now for Enigma 6, and the flag is being pulled. We may be able to see these guys tie up this game. That's the fourth mm. member going down. That is Victory X running the flag here. Nobody's going to be in position to stop this guy. And he's yeah. going to go ahead and tie this one up. Victory X moving fast with the flag. Now it's all tied up here. Possibly going to a game five if EG's able to walk away with this one. And this
this is where that conversation starts to set in. I mean, you're on the verge of possibly being reverse sweep, possibly thinking about a team change. This is where a team that is all really good friends, like EG, is going to have a little bit of an advantage because it's going to give them that never say die mentality. So it's going to be up to E6 to try to put that behind them. And look at the little ring around the Rosie going on here. Ring around the Rosie going in, but advantage over to EG. They have the weapons and they have that. And Stellar, or Suspector, never even died. Yeah, Suspector finally had taken out. This is the final flag cap being pulled. Ninja's got this one pretty far. Flag hasn't been pulled. It's still at home to score. There it is. If you can get it over to Victory X. Victory X is watching elbow spawns. He needs to get back to the base immediately. There's another player coming in with the splinter grenade. Victory X puts it in. Tied up two to two. Going to game number five. And Tom, you've got to be kidding me that we're seeing this. Are, are we going to see something like sweeps? this again? I don't know. Take a look at some of the stats here. Of course, Enigma 6, Boo Boo Boo, and Stellar really kind of showcasing their talents this game. 13 to 14 kills at Kratos and Suspector kind of struggling a little bit, even on the fly caps that they did have. We saw a lot of miss opportunities from Suspector on picking up some kills, and we saw Stellar just clutching it left and right. Mm, game number five. This is what it's all about. And I can't remember what the last game type was, but. The last game type Slayer Eden. You gotta give, yeah, Slayer Eden. You gotta give the advantage of EG based on the momentum. But this is again one of those game types that I feel like E6 plays really well. They're not scared to slow it down. They're not scared to give up any dumb deaths. But you're going up against a team who preaches that same thing. They both of these teams really like to play the numbers game. I think that E6 is a little bit more flank heavy than these guys on the EG side. But wow. I can't, I can't believe that EG was able to pull that one back. I mean, it wasn't looking good. They were down in the game 2-0, two right? to zero, yeah. and then somebody stepped it up. I mean, I think everybody necessarily stepped it up. And I mean, it was 50 to 38 in game two. Ninja had that abysmal performance. <laughs> he's not likely to do that. If you took that out, that game was pretty much neck and neck. It could be tied now that he's playing normal again or playing a little bit better than he was, maybe not playing as good as he should be. You're going to have to say that EG is going to probably win this series now. Yeah, I'm going to put it as Ninja's the X Factor here. I mean, based on the four games we've seen, Stellar's going to show up. Uh, you know, we're going to see Roy show up. We're going to see Victory about, show what up. What about Victory's the Victory X Factor, though? The Victory X Factor is there, but I mean, Ninja <laughs> with a 3 and 15 or 3 and 16 performance, I think that's more X Factor ish for this game yeah. number five. Thought he was golfing, but apparently we're playing Halo, so. All right, Eden Slayer, blue team with the advantage. You want to hold down the blue base, get control of that sniper, get control of that rocket launcher. Also try to hold security at the same time. So typically an ideal setup would be have one guy in security with the rockets or the shotgun, have another guy with the sniper on that blue platform or on the blue flag in the window area, another guy crouching outside with the SMG, and then another guy that's either rotating around or keeping people alive or just distracting and being a nuisance, creating opportunities for your weapon players. All right, looks like Ninja did spot a player here. Trying to contest the shotgun. He's going to push right up on him. Gets a couple shots, and that's not going to be a ghost shotgun. Ninja grabs first strike with shotgun. Interestingly enough, that's Boopy Doo strategy to start the game. So Ninja ends up going in there and taking a little page out of his book and charging in there with the shotgun. Boopy Doo has to be a little oh. upset. Oh, Ninja, his shotgun wasn't working in Plaza, but it's definitely working on Eden, picking up two kills for his team and big kills as well on priority targets. So now here comes the flood coming in from EG. Rocket's coming in from Lunchbox. He gets taken out eventually, so everyone just gonna be constantly battling for position here towards that blue base. Oh, and Roy doing an amazing job of staying alive. We have rockets down there, we have sniper down there, shotguns down there, all the weapons are right here. And there it is, Roy's gonna pick up a full sniper rifle and also has numbers advantage over here, so he's gonna not miss that shot onto Kratos, takes his face. Ninja gets the kill onto Stellar, nine to four lead for EG. The reverse sweep possibly happening. T to combo in Roy's hands. He's gonna drop it though because everybody knows that, you know, Everybody knows don't do what T2 does. Yeah, everyone knows that's selfish. And, you know, only only, uh, only a few players can can pull off that combo. No, I mean, I'm just kidding. But true power comes true responsibility. It, it does. And these guys can't handle it. It does. <laughs> Kyle, loving the quotes. <laughs> oh man, but. That's good because, like I said, you want to have the rocket or the shotgun guy over there. And something to keep in mind is that the shotgun is going to be on spawn. So if Lunchbox ends up using his rockets, or Ninja actually has the rockets, so Lunchbox can grab that shotgun. Now three players have weapons. 
on the side of Evil Geniuses. Everybody besides Victor X. So Ninja even Rocket gets a kill seconds. there. And that's the type of things that happen when momentum starts going on your side. You start picking up these kills that you wouldn't necessarily get. And Roy actually rotates the sniper rifle outside when the rockets are coming up. Looks like they want to charge over here towards red base since the blue side of the map was given up. And I think that's a pretty smart play because of the fact that they do have so much ammo in this sniper rifle, they could just get the necessary picks that they needed to set up. And what a great rotation. So many nades to Spectre or Stellar trying to jump out and contest, knowing there's several no shield players there, but just too much teamwork and damage output when you're getting triple team, not able to capitalize on that. Still has the sniper doing a great rotation here. And let's keep in mind, game number five of a potential reverse sweep. Again, the second one of the night. This is absolutely bananas. And Again, E6, they really do a good job of not giving up these, these deaths. They have really good positions to hide that make you frustrated with the weapons and you start going into positions that make you a little bit more vulnerable. So let's see if they're able to do that. All right, now this game is definitely going to slow down here. Sniper let's just take a moment seconds. of silence and see how Roy decides he wants to play this, having this decent, decent right. size lead. I'll, I'll give you five seconds. Sniper rifle's ready. All right, I can't be quiet any bit longer, but Roy doing a nice job baiting that sniper rifle. Gets that body shot onto Boo Boo Doo Boo. Also going to rotate over here. Sick grenade onto that player. That's going to be Suspector. Killing spree for Roy. Also still baiting that sniper rifle area. And the thing is, is they think that he's sniping outside towards red fans. So this is a sick rotation coming in from Roy. Can't be too predictable here. So I love the way that he's moving around. As you can see, that player is outside looking for him. But they're already pushing onto Blue Base and talking about which rotations that they want to make. And that was just a little bit too aggressive, but he does put Ninja in a good position to potentially stay alive here and grab these power weapons. Keep in mind, Roy still got his sniper down on his dead body. Lunchbox able to grab this new one. We'll go take a look at his screen, although he just drops that for Ninja. What a team player dropping it to the guy with three kills over there in Plaza. But like I said, Ninja, he's not going to do that very often. That's probably a, you know, a fluke game coming out from him. He's going to be, you know, pretty upset about himself oh. in that one. Want to hit these shots for his fans in the Ninja stream. And he does. So Kratos going to drop to him looking for another one. On to who is that? That's going to be Stellar. So Stellar's going to run away. And also Victory X securing those rockets. So this is not looking very good. For, oh, they have rockets on top of rockets. So rockets squared here. And they're making a way over there towards the security side, which is exactly what you want to do with those rockets. Another player above oh, a sick play is coming out from Ninja. Top Gun has the combo. Getting the triple kill. Looking for the over kill where is the player he's gonna be at blue hiding so no overkill coming in from ninja and now people see why he used that combo gosh and the enigma six has to be cringing right now knowing like wait they've got rockets and, and more rockets and more sniper and shotgun yeah well that's what happens when you slow the game down right you slow the game down so much that you let the other players that have the weapons continue to just bait the weapons with those uh, with those weapons so <laughs> so a lot of weapon action going on and ninja Four rockets total, four kills total. So perfect utilization of the rockets. And that's some of the main mistakes that we've been seeing a lot of players in the Pro League make. We saw Commonly yesterday, you know, not making the best of his rockets in Eden and the rest of Liquid doing the same, but that's not the case here for EG today. And we just saw Booba Dooba get a headshot. That's gonna be Roy's uh, old sniper that had like one or two shots left in it that Booba Dooba was able to secure a kill with. So we are coming down. We're past the halfway mid, uh, halfway point here for Evil Genius has still got this sniper still got all this ammo. Oh my Ooh. challenge. Oh, oh my god. I can't believe that Ninja is challenging that. That's the type of the stuff when He's I was feeling with it. him that I would just be like, come on, Tyler, what are you doing? But then he pulls it off and, and all is good here in the universe. But looks like Stellar does spot Roy with those hit markers on the grenades. He's going to rotate immediately out here towards that rocket side of the map because the rockets are coming up but still on to what Roy's doing realizing that he hasn't popped up quite yet gonna make his way towards the old camo spawns where those splinter grenades are and that's Roy that's been a nuisance that entire time nice grenade coming from Stellar predicting if Roy was potentially gonna jump up and I do like this play making his way over towards that sniper rifle area but again Roy is all over him making sure that he can't run around the map and it's only a seven kill game though and positional advantage going over to E6 weapons going into their favor as well I mean you can see swing in Halo 5 more than Halo. any other Halo, I'd say. Just the ability to grab weapons because of map control and just close any kind of lead. Yeah, it's just about... Remember that commercial, my better is better than your better? I don't know, maybe, maybe. you don't remember that one. But that's pretty much what this is all about because 
everyone's going to go on their run. And it's about how long can you make your run and how quickly can you stop the other team's run. And that's pretty much what Halo 5 is all about. And being able to have that mental stamina to realize that these games are never over and that they could go to th the distance, which this game's definitely going to go the distance uh, if it continues to slow down like this. Only five minutes remaining, so that's something to watch out for if you're E6 and uh, if the score starts to get a little bit out of hand. you got to add more pressure. You can't Home lose the game based on time. What is happening? Look at those stats. Yeah, Ninja, you know, definitely not happy about his performance in that Plaza game, trying to make up for it here. The Spectre is boring right now. We'll go back to Ninja. <laughs> well, Ninja has the sniper in his hands too. And again, you know, they don't have to do anything. They can just let E6 come to them. They can slow play this one. They they need to get control of blue eventually. You don't want to necessarily be stuck at red base and give up control. So outside is a good spot for them to be for the next 30 seconds when rockets are going to drop here. <laughs> oh, on to Kratos. This guy's like a magnet right now with the sniper rifle. And here it goes. They're going to be a seven kill lead, though. But rockets and shotgun kills coming in for the side of E6. Now, Ninja has to stay alive here. Again, rockets dropping outside here shortly. He's going to get swarmed by the Red Ben players. Amazing shots. Oh, oh man. If he would have did that, I would have freaked out. Oh, the ground pound, too. I like where his head's at. He's taking on any and all competitors over here outside towards the red base. But in the grand scheme of things, it's not going to really do much for EG because they did lose a little bit of their lead. Oh, and that was, was that just two sets of rockets down on the map? I mean, suspected. That was the first action we've seen from him with those rockets for quite some time. He was over in security mm, the whole time, but wow. Ninja doesn't care what weapons you have. He's still coming at you with the pistol. But look, the close the score of the game, it is, it is shrinking here pretty quickly. Oh, Roy not Roy able to nade. hit that nade. Yeah, I don't know. He's not left-handed, so maybe he wants to just throw that one with his right hand next time. <laughs> um, but yeah, this one's going to slow down. And again, keep an eye on the clock. Three minutes and 30 seconds remaining. I would say that this has a good percentage chance of going over to not, not necessarily overtime, but to that 0-0 zero, zero mark now. Uh, for the Slayer, I believe if it's tied, we do have that same type of rules for CTF where it continues to go towards three minutes. So eventually it would hit that 50 mark because the players aren't going to slow play it there at that point anymore. But this is it. This is when the big push here for the weapons are coming up. EG does have position to grab it, but I don't think that they're going to be able to unless they are they going to throw a plasma. So look out. That's going to be E6 throwing a plasma over there. <laughs> but everyone throwing bad grenades and no. Wait, are sniper. they really bad grenades that, that, or what is happening? <laughs> well, that sniper apparently screwed into the ground there so uh gonna have to got some sniper in the stone action going yeah, on sniper in the stone whoever's able to pull that one out of the stone looks like ninja he's gonna be the worthy one so <laughs> let's see if he's rewarded with those kills there and it is a four kill I mean, game so he's 18 and 9 i think he deserves it yeah you got to be careful of the time though if you're e6 again gotta gotta reiterate that there's not much time here oh that was the, the rocket rock. player so i would totally make that trade there if i was ninja any day of the week i think that was kratos's last rocket though and i'm not sure what lunch okay there was a player baiting that with that sniper. So the sniper did still have ammo in it for the side of E6. So that's a little bit worrisome there. So Spectre with that one. One kill game here. Shotgun also over towards blue. This is scary for EG. Oh, geez. Right now, are we seeing it happen again, Tom? I can't believe how today is unfolding. This is kind of ridiculous. That's oh two snipers gosh. now for E6. Two minutes left. And the rocket's coming up. Rocket they have to the get field. these for EG. There's two minutes. So this is scary. Couple players caught no shields outside towards red. That's the scissor action with the sniper. So Spectre and Boo Boo from the catwalk in the blue bend area. Now everyone on EG is just spreading out as fast as they can. Looking for that no scope oh. on the lunch box. If that wall wasn't there, that would have been good. But here's the play coming in with the rockets. That's Roy making his way over there. Oh my gosh, Boo 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 still has a rocket left. He gets a kill on to Ninja. This a is 40 to 39, a minute and a half left, Kyle. This is, I can't believe what is happening. I don't even know what to say anymore. My mind is just blown. Yeah, I mean, this is bad for EG. They, I think they have a set of rockets. Booby doo -boo out of rockets in his back pocket there. And, ooh, that player taking down a no shields. That's Victory X. <laughs> I don't know what kind of spot that was coming in from Victory, but as you can see, that E6 does have two snipers still. And that sniper does have a lot of ammo in it for Booby doo -boo now. Here's the question. If you're EG, when do you decide to push? That is 
That is the question. You are correct. Ooh, they get a kill. Roy gets a kill oh, onto Stellar. Got I think you got to go now. Here. Yeah, this is the time to go. I mean, EG, they're the master no of playing the numbers he game. Dies. He walks Roy. into the grenade. Lunchbox has rockets. Boo -boo -boo. No, Lunchbox with the rockets as well. 42 to 20. Now EG's going to sit there and collapse. That's the Spectre with that sniper rifle. Doesn't hit that rocket. Lunchbox misses. He has one left in the chamber. 42 to 41 here. He's going to reload. They didn't have one in the chamber. He's also getting pinched at the same time. That's a player in front of him. Does he get the kill? He does. So Boo Boo Doo is going to be taken out. Lunchbox, 30 seconds. He's full shields here. He needs to rotate. Okay, so he does. He could also grab the SMG and just waited there at the same time. It's a one kill lead here for EG. What's E6 going to do? What do they have in store? All four of them outside. Everybody on EG needs to stack oh. on top of he uh, their heads Roy. out here. Roy is uh, in the way. What is going on? This one, if Roy dies, it could potentially go to overtime, which would be our first round. Roy is way too out of position here. Oh my god, why is he shooting that guy? He's gonna shoot him anyway. Kratos gets killed by, and then Suspector gets the kill under Roy. It's tied up, it's 44 to 44. This oh, he hits it! No scope. He hits it, where's the last kill? One is second, gonna come one in? second! That's game! Ninja goes huge! Oh my god, what is happening right now? That is a game of five, another reverse sweep, ending by a one kill differential. And if there's any maps that we see don't go all the way to 50 kills, it's gonna be on Eden, but look at Ninja. Now I think he's still negative as far as total overall Team Slayer <laughs> maps go, but doesn't matter, he earned all the respect back, dropping a 20 bomb, not even 50 kills in this game. He got 20 of the 45 kills, Tom. Oh my gosh, that was Ninja just going huge the confidence that he showed not even in that no scope at the end think about when he flew out mid bridge and gave someone that hot five when he had the battle rifle it all started right there in the beginning oh. he's got <laughs> the scope in there with the shotgun just doing insane damage and you just go back and look at all these kills and realize it was only a one kill game at the very end and that was insane i couldn't imagine a more epic way to end week two here I'm sure Towie's got that recorded as well. So I'm sure we'll be seeing a video out of him pretty soon. The reactions out of Ninja. I'm pretty sure he's still at the Xfinity Training Center there with the rest of the guys. So that, what an epic legendary win. Cannot wait to see who our winner view with today is going to be. But taking a look at the series, that is a 2-0 lead. I feel like I just watched game, or series number two unfold again. The game number one was 3-2 victory. <laughs> game two was a convincing win as well for Allegiance. Game number three, everything turns around and Evil Geniuses comes out with a 45-44 game five last series of the night. That was awesome. I hope you guys enjoyed watching it as much as we did casting it. But yeah, you're right. That's the reverse sweep two times in one day. I don't know if I've ever seen that happen two times in one week, one month, let alone the same day. Awesome. It's like awesome deja matches. vu. Yeah. Deja vu. Just it's happened. like what? Deja vu. It's huh? Deja vu. No, like what? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but wow. <laughs> Holy cow. Evil Geniuses has to be on top of the world. And just think. What if that kill went a little bit differently? Could we have seen Enigma Six stay the same? Is this gonna their how good they play this game? Is that gonna, you know, make them consider staying together more? The loss? Who knows what's gonna happen? I don't know. It's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be bananas. It's gonna be bonkers, whatever you want to call it. There's not enough adjectives in the dictionary or my thesaurus to be able to describe it. But yeah, I mean, if if we take a look at just overall how everything's gonna pan out, is Renegade gonna stay with this LOL lineup? Is Stellar going to continue to be with E6? I'm not sure. Those are the two big question marks. I think that Allegiance, they don't need to make a team change, even though they're sitting at one and three. They've lost three game fives. They could easily, you know, be sitting at four and zero. So, you know, one thing's for sure. EG's happy right now. <laughs> EG is on top of the world. They defeated Optic Gaming. They won 50-49 to an, or 45-44 against Enigma. The same thing. The, well, I would say it's the same thing, but it's just that much more impressive having 20 kills in a game that was to 45. Yeah, yeah, it totally is. And he was going off right from the beginning of the game with that shotgun. That's the type of thing that gave him confidence, gave him momentum. And uh, we actually have him for the winner view. It's going to be Tawi and Ninja. How are you guys doing? <laughs> <laughs> Oh We're doing good. Just trying to figure out some audio stuff. Yeah, I was panicking. Hear, can you guys hear us? Huh? Yeah. So I think we're good. We totally can hear you. So what just happened? Walk us through, first of all, the worst performance we've ever seen you have, and then the <laughs> best performance we've ever seen you have. I really, I really wish you guys weren't watching that. Uh, it was super uncomfortable. Uh, the first two games, I was just like, 
not playing well at all. <laughs> uh, I was missing a lot, uh, making just like really bad plays, like looking away. I think I had multiple lookaways where I thought they were dead, and I just looked away and I turned back around and it was too late. Um, yeah, it, it was bad, making solo pushes a lot. Uh, and then game three, kind of turned it turned it all around. There, uh, I decided like it was like a little click, like a switch happened. We were it was when we were up sixty to nothing in strongholds, and then I'm like, and then and then we they. 60 to, like pointed us without any of us scoring or taking anything back and then I, I ran was going nest or I was gonna go flowers and then I was like wait a minute I'm gonna grab the shotgun turn around grab the shotgun and from there on the entire series I stopped uh I stopped playing like garbage I mean it sounds kind of silly but you played a lot better after the shotgun grab I'm was, not gonna lie it's just I mean I, I, it's like I picked it up dude and I just absorbed all of Rami's skill from that shotgun dude. is and that it, how that works it is I well, doing for the, that, man. except for the guy that Got t- that didn't take the shotgun for the triple kill towards top nest. I have no idea what's <laughs> going on. Right? But would, we, we but would you say that that was the turning point? Oh, oh dude. I'm I can't reference this game, game right now. Uh, yes, dude, definitely. Yeah, would you say you're on cloud nine right now? Oh, uh, just for, just <laughs> you guys are good. Are there any more of these? Holy crap. Yeah. Just for one event. Uh, all right, go ahead. All right, real questions. Uh, no, all right. So... Now, you guys had your loss yesterday going up against Envy. What was the internal discussion over there? Because we all know about the rules. Let's forget about that. And then let's talk yeah, about yeah. the actual series. You, you guys know that it doesn't come down to the rule. It came down to how you guys played and those decisions that you make. What was your guys' mindset and your discussion after your loss yesterday and moving forward to today? Well, to be honest, you know, we felt like we had the game uh, up until, obviously, there was a disconnect, which... Nobody who plays competitively wants that. Nobody wants anything to do with some player disconnecting, right. having any sort of an impact in the game. So um, we did our best to try to block that out. And obviously we got off to a bit of a rocky start. And, <laughs> uh, well, we've, we've had problems in the past with, uh, you know, things kind of spiraling out of control. And that's kind of the nature of the Strongholds game type. And, you know, we saw that today. We got up to like a 50 or 60 point 60 lead. Point they got up to like a 50 or 60 point run, run on us then. And it's just about, you know, trying to collect yourselves, especially, uh, you know, your positioning and making those correct pushes. And unfortunately, our communication just wasn't there. Our focus wasn't there uh, in that replay game. And, I mean, you have to give it to them. They, they played extremely well in the replay. Um, yeah. They just controlled spawns. I mean, they set yeah. the pace of the game. They knew we were spawning. Very rarely did we ever try to predict any spawns or have the positioning to influence spawns, which is how you really want to play that game type. So, yeah, they, they played it very well. All right. Well, Tyler, I'm going to let you but, finish uh, there. But a few things. I'm going to let you finish. But what I really want to hear about is not yesterday's matches. I want you to walk me through game number five with, like, you know, four minutes or so left. I know at one point we saw Lunchbox get a sniper, drop it off to you, uh, Tyler. And, yeah. and, of course, I also want to know what you were thinking when you chal- you were on Nest and challenged the guy top catwalk, which you blamed him, but you traded kills. You know, walk us through that game yeah. number five. Oh, my God. I forgot about that. Oh, dude. I wouldn't have, the thing is, is I wouldn't have got away. Uh, I, I saw my shields. I, my shields were gone. My health was at half. So any BR burst, even if it wasn't a headshot, I was dead. So, I mean, I knew he was going to jump up and clamber and go for the kill. So at that point, I was like, I'm either going to trade it or I'm going to own him. And I, I traded it. And then Cam ended up getting, or Jason ended up getting the sniper uh, after that. So, I, I mean, mean, it's not a bad thought process. I mean, either way, no way, he's probably going to die. I'm so, gonna die. best case scenario, he gets the shot. Hopefully, he at least hits it for a trade for us if that guy gets cleaned up. So, it's a good play. But really, uh, that game type is, you know, the pace is set by the power weapon control, which we did extremely well early in the game. Um, but it just came down to rotations and. Obviously, they went on a pretty big run there as well to catch back up to us. Yeah. And, you know, we were able to slow things down. It got a little hectic there at the end. Uh, they had rockets. One of them pushed through, and we were able to kill him as a trade. You know, we killed the rocket guy that pushed under uh, all the way to blue to us, and he traded with us. So he didn't really get an advantage by pushing, you know, with rockets. And, I mean, that kind of saved us. No, let me tell honest. you exactly why we won that game. <laughs> Shout out to Roy Justin. Oh, my God. He was in blue. There's like 20, 30 seconds left. 30 seconds left. He was in blue. J- uh, Jason and Victory X ran to tower, and I was like, I'm going to run to tower. So I literally <laughs> left blue, and as I'm leaving, Justin's like, no, don't leave me in blue, dude, please. <laughs> Just like that. Like, that was exactly how he sounded. That is exactly like, what it is. Turned around, came back, found a sniper. When I came You went out. over it. I found the sniper. Well, you I went, knew okay, I, I okay. saw an item on the ground. I picked it up. God, I thought I got a two for one. I didn't, but then we, Jason and I, or Justin and I, double teamed the other guy, and then and, whew, 
Yeah, I, was, I don't want to say it was lucky, but it was dude, a Justin little, 100%. It was a little lucky. I, it was a good Roy play call, I'll tell you that. Yeah, he's like, please don't leave me alone, dude, please. So I just came right back, and that's <laughs> honestly why we won the game. All right. Now, Towie, I know we saw some of the highlights from when you guys defeated Optic. Now, are we going to see any kind of similar things coming out from this series? Because I know I'd love to see it. I, uh, I did record the whole series. Yeah, we'll have that up here on YouTube Pretty soon. Pretty sure it's just going to be uh, a five-minute, you know, teaser slash shit talking of me getting on the first two games entirely. it wasn't your best performance in games one and two but it's about how you close the series yeah so. like with the, one of those womp womp songs you know every time i die womp 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 just like a you know just horrible yeah. play after horrible play but there will be another video with pretty much the exact same reaction after we beat optic <laughs> was, i mean that was a wild game i've been a part of a lot of game fives or game sevens and game elevens and all that throughout over the years and that was as chaotic as I can remember. I mean, every like every power weapon in the game for two sets of spawns was like all down in one spot with a minute and a half yep. to go. That was wild. Now, of course, guys, congratulations. Go out and celebrate. Tell the twins we oh, yeah. said congrats as well. It was an awesome performance. <laughs> Ninja, you had like 10 game-changing plays in that game number five. So props to you as well again. Thank you, man. All Thank right. you, guys. Thanks for joining us. Have a good one. Oh, oh, um, oh yeah. No, nah, never mind, dude. We'll talk later. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, later, All right. guys. Yeah. Wow, there you have it. They're funny. They are. There's a really good group of guys for sure. Now, of course, that is the final series of the night. Today might have been the best day of Pro League I have ever been a part of. What an amazing couple of matches that we've watched. Let's go ahead and take a quick recap at what we saw unfold today. And wow, I, I still can't even believe what exactly happened. Yeah, it's been pretty insane. 3-0, 3-0, and then two epic 3-2s, and they were both reverse sweeps. And both game 5, 50, 40, or one kill yeah, differential. Yeah, one, one kill game, so absolutely insane. And again, we just go back to talking about how competitive this season is, how every little decision affects the longevity of your Halo career and your Halo team in general, everyone battling it out for these top four positions. And you know, with that roster transaction period coming up here soon, the big question is, is anything gonna happen? Yeah, now with week two, day two coming to a close, let's go ahead and take a look at the standings after today's matches. We've got Team Envious and Optic Gaming and Evil Genius is now in a tight race in that top three spots. And look how close the first two map percentage win rates are. Imagine if Team Envious didn't get 3 0'd by Liquid that first day. Now, of course, that's followed up by Team Liquid, Enigma 6, and Luminosity, all at that four, five, and six spots. And then Allegiance and LOL sitting in those relegation locations. Now, of course, we have lots more action in store. Let's go ahead and take a look at next Wednesday's Pro League schedule. We'll have Enigma 6 facing off against Allegiance. Ooh. And keep in mind, all of these matches, we might have some new lineups that we're looking every, at. Every day is awesome here. I mean, you know, hopefully LOL gets it together and starts putting up more of a fight because every single series besides the ones that they're playing in are extremely close. And, you know, it's no difference here. E6 going up against Allegiance, very even matchup. Optic Gaming going up against Envious. Man, that's going to be absolutely awesome. insane. LOL going up against Liquid. Hopefully that's a close series. And then Evil Genius is going up against Luminosity. It's really going to be up to Luminosity to step it up. They started off hot 2-0, and and now they find themselves in a little bit of a rut. Yeah, I mean, this season is just absolutely insane. Now, of course, if you like what you saw and you want to go back and rewatch any of it, catch any of those Game 5 insane action matches or, you know, take a look at the schedule again, whatever you want to do in regards to the HCS Pro League here, make sure you head over to ProLeague.com forward slash halo for all of the information there now that's going to do it for week two day number two t squared and i joining you at the xfinity desk here ggs and good night and we'll see you next week